Meet 27-year-old Paul Skates from Somerset. He's dedicated his life to the pursuit of pleasure. Trouble is, his finances can't keep up. My relationship with money is a kind of... It's a one-way relationship because it's all about me taking it and not giving anything back. I'm bringing sexy back. Yeah. Despite earning £1,800 a month, his debt has reached a hair-raising 36 grand. I love spending my money mainly on socialising, pampering and making myself look good. Maybe £110. Thank you very much. Paul works as an events and music promoter, but for him, every day is a big event. I'm here for a good time, not a long time, and kind of always living that my dream. His dream is to run his own company catering to the jet set. In reality, he's heading for Skid Row. That's £60 for today, please. Great. £60 well spent. Over the next four weeks, lifestyle guru Jay Hunt will put the brakes on his spending. You're choosing a very risky job market. You're going to have to have your finances sorted. And psychological coach Benjamin Fry will unravel the emotional triggers behind his compulsion. I would never, ever resent my mother. You say categorically you would not feel like that, but you've behaved like that. I'm incredibly desperate to change, I need to change, and without this change, God knows what direction I will end up going within. Paul Skates lives the life of a man in charge of his own media empire. In reality, he's just one month into his first professional job as an events assistant, earning 21 grand a year. Hello, Paul speaking. I see myself as being a, a kind of big media entrepreneur. So therefore, the money that, the way that I'm spending now is what I perceive that I will actually be able to spend in the future. And the heady mix of after-show parties and opening nights fuels his love of the high life. Every weekend, Paul leaves his sleepy West Country home to rub shoulders with the movers and shakers in London's exclusive members clubs. He kind of, on a night out, will spend whatever he has on the most expensive drink at the bar. And it's just to kind of impress other people who he doesn't even know will ever see again. Image is very important to me, A, because like anybody, I want to look good for myself, but also for my career. It's, it's, it's the quintessential, if you like, of, of, of what my job is. With his spending out of control, the banks have long turned their backs on him, leaving his long-suffering parents to pick up the tab. The family over the years all been bailed out. We're, we're talking, well, thousands, if not tens of thousands. But even they've reached their credit limit. Banks won't give him any more money. We won't give him any more money. He, he hasn't anywhere else to go. So 717. Great, thank you. Very much. With no signs of stopping, Paul is at crisis point. Thank you very much. I love money, but money doesn't necessarily love me at the moment. Hi, how are you doing? You right? While Paul's out, Benjamin and Jay conduct their own financial audit at his house. Jay's looking for where the money's going. Benjamin's searching for any psychological patterns to his spending behaviour. I hope they don't find anything that truly reflects my spending over the last sort of ten years, because they might have a shock. Oh, look. I love having a good old rifle through the fridge. <laughs> Champagne? Yes. Do you think there's a special occasion coming up? Or well, I don't that... know. There's four bottles uh, in there. It's so... like a typical night in. It's quite bare. What's that? Tenancy agreement. Mm. Oh, look, he's only just moved in. Interesting. Quite high rent. I know. Shall we take that? Good lord. How take long is that it for? with us. All right. Let's see if we can find his room. Okay. Look at oh, this. Not, Champagne lifestyle bed. Not. not really glamorous, is it? Yeah. What have we got? One for you. Ah. Oh, what's that doing up there? Versace suit? Mm. What's the damage on that? Talking about five, six hundred quid's worth of suit there. Mm. It isn't long before they find the evidence of his addiction to London's elite members' clubs. Receipts. Nice night out at Soho House. 150 quid drop there. <laughs> Look what I found. Fake tan. Oh, Never no. be without that. 
Well, there's one for you. What's that? That's a book about kind of how the mind can heal the body. Maybe he has some physical issues. Maybe someone in his family. Who knows? I, of course, noticed the fact that it's all propped up with his hairspray. I see. An essential tool for the man about town. The Bill. alternative thinker. Hmm, you absolutely. can heal your hair. If these are all his belongings, it does give the impression of somebody who hasn't got that much stuff and the focus well, is outside look, the house. Look, he's a 27-year-old man, he's got a lot of debt. He hasn't spent it on anything that he could carry in here, has he? There's no ritzy equipment, there's no plasma screens. It's not a place you really want to spend a lot of time, is it? Not really, no. I'd go out if I lived here. I think we'll leave, shall we? You know how much I hate going out. The bedroom only confirms what they suspect. Paul spends very little time at home. Might the bathroom offer any more clues? Oh, look! A nice wow. array of modern man products. Anything for me? Well, you can have a go at that. What is it? Little bit left in there. Careful, yeah. Benjamin, it's expensive. I reckon there's about three, four hundred pounds worth of stuff just sitting there. Well, do you think he uses it or do you think he's one of these people who likes to buy and display? Oh no, I think he uses it. All of it? Definitely into a bit of product. To put that in context, is that the kind of amount of stuff that, like, for example, you might have in your bathroom? I'd have about that much, so I'd, I'd say do. about a third of this. And you're pretty high maintenance, And I'm so... a woman. Yeah. W-O-M-A-N. There's obviously no need for it. <laughs> I knew you were a woman. The major thing that I'm obviously concerned with is them seeing my bills and seeing what's on there, like the nights out in Soho House and various other places that I go to. Oh, the oh, bills. Those. Let's take those. Oh, good, his statements and everything. Paul's right to be worried. His bank statements read like a day-to-day -day inventory of A-list celebrities with regular visits to members' clubs, West End salons and health spas. Oh, God, it's like so much at Soho House. Look, Soho House, does he actually live there? Oh, my God. It's not called House for Nothing, I There's suppose. There's masses of stuff there. There's a lot of money here as well on hairdressing. It looks like, <laughs> like £60 a week or something. This is a guy who likes to indulge, that's for sure. It's like mm. Pampa City. It's incredible. I know. What does he get up to, this bloke? God only knows. Let's, Let's take this with us. Paul's been living beyond his means for too long. It's time to take him back to basics. Hello. Do you want a lift? You look a bit lonely standing there. Come on in. Paul, thanks for coming with us today. Have you got any idea why we've got you in the back of this car? I don't at all. I kind of feel a bit like Challenge Annika or something <laughs> like that. It's like, what's going to happen next? We thought we'd ease you in today. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go on a little journey and pick up some friends along the way, if that's Fabulous. OK. Yeah. Paul feels presentation is vital to his career. What Benjamin and Jay want to drive home is just how much this image is costing him. Ah, oh, here's our first friend. Oh, uh, it's lovely to see you. And you, nice uh, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you happy? Oh, very happy. Good, thank cause you. if you're happy, I can cut your hair. All right. Hello, sir. So you look down. Hello. Right, shall we get your feet out? Paul runs up five treatments in an average week. Your complexion will be amazing, and the best thing is, you smell gorgeous too. <laughs> but will the final bill come as a surprise? So if I said. Put a total on how much you think you spend Gosh. in a year on treatments, what would you think it would be? In the thousands. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest, I really kind of randomly just trying to work it out. Paul, the amount of money you spend on pampering yourself in a year would pay for this size of team to pamper you all week long. We've worked out that the actual total of how much you spend is £9,200 a year. It's a nice tidy sum, isn't it? On all your treatments. Is that more than you thought? It is, actually, to be fair. I didn't have a, a great idea, but it, I don't know. I, would, I wouldn't have put it down to 9,200 a year. How I'm relaxing is that? Um, not that. doesn't sit that well, actually. Mm. Um, if I had the right income, it would sit very well. But sure. Obviously, I'd just spend more if I had more. It just goes to show how much money you're spending. I, has this been a bit of a shock? Um, quite clearly, I'd say yes. Okay. Your head. But that's only half the story. 
In Paul's world, presentation and partying go hand in hand. Now, in front of you here, mm -hmm. we have, and you'll recognise this. Yeah. 1,520 glasses of champagne. It's a good night out, isn't it? I think it's a bit more than a good night out. I think it's considerably over the top for mm -hmm. a night out. Because, in fact, each glass of champagne represents okay. ten pounds that you spend in a whole year okay. on your champagne lifestyle going out. You know how Certainly. much that makes? No, go on. You spent last year fifteen thousand two hundred pounds. That's a lot of money. Going out, drinking champagne, <laughs> and having, as you said, a good night out. That's certainly a lot of money. And um, providing a good night out for quite a lot of other yeah. people, I'd say. Oh, definitely. You like the service in smart places. Yeah. And you're kind of like living the high life. Yeah, God, <laughs> yeah. In the fast lane, that's the way forward for me, okay. without a doubt. Bottle by bottle, yeah. you can justify it, but when you see it like this, yeah. all laid out in front of you, uh -huh. you realise that it is out of control. It puts everything in perspective and you kind of think, oh my God, really, am I actually consuming this much, let alone spending this much? Um, and it's quite scary. Money for me, it's still at the moment, after all these shocks and everything, it's still just a number, rather than actually, oh, this is money out of my account that I'm spending. <laughs> Paul's clearly in denial about the true cost of his lifestyle. If he's to change, it'll take a harsh dose of reality to bring him to his senses. So, Paul, what we're going to do now is work out with you what you think is the least amount of money that you can live on for the next seven days to pay for your non-essential items. And before we work that out, we just wanted to find out from you whether you had any idea at all how much you spend on non-essential items in your average week. Not a clue. If I'm honest, <laughs> because I never really pay attention to it, I right. just spend away. So how much do you reckon, then, you get through in an average week? Three to 300 pounds. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, but I think we covered that at the uh, champagne bar already. Yeah. Well, we've been through your statements and we've worked out that on an average week you managed to get through £535.35p and every single week. That's a lot of money. And that's every week. Yeah. And that's way over my uh, weekly income. Hence the... Uh... Hence the financial difficulties, yeah. Well, what we've got to work out now is how much you think you can live on minimum amount for the next seven days to pay for non-essential items. Non okay, for non-essentials, cutting out the treatments, the socialising to the level it is, I'm up for a challenge and I'd say £40. Not bad. Reasonable opening offer. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? I'm thinking... I'm not going to argue with that, actually. Yeah, okay. I think £40, if that's what you think, yeah. then I'm not going to cut it down by another fiver or whatever and give you something totally mm -hmm. that, you know, it's something totally that you're not going to be able to manage. I think £40 cut down from 535 is going to be a, a different drop. lifestyle yeah. for the week. It's going to be a shock. Well, bring it on. That's what I say. <laughs> bring it's on, on. the on. next yeah. seven days. <laughs> there it is. There's no bringing left. <laughs> Paul would normally spend £40 on one round of drinks. Now he's got to make it last seven days. The socialising aspect of things is going to be the biggest challenge for me. I work hard, I do 12-hour days, whatever, and, and from there, my social aspect is my reward for working hard. It's day one of cold turkey. Paul's entering a brave new world, one without professional hairdressers. I can smell burnt hair, Ryan. What's that all about? You don't That's get that quite, when you go into a normal, salon, do you? It's normal, honestly. They get the bloody sack. <laughs> For now, he's feeling confident. Then again, he is just 12 hours in. Do you think you can do it? Yeah, I can do it anything. <laughs> 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 no, I, I reckon, seriously, I can do it. I don't know if I can survive on £40 a week for the rest of my life. £40. Me and £40? Do they really go in the same rooms? Maybe I could employ you for, like, £10 a week yeah. <laughs> and you could just come round every morning and do my hair for me. But the next challenge is how am I going to get over the facials and the manicures and all that and the fake tan because you can't do it out of a bottle. It just looks like you've been 
running through mud or something with a bit of an orange tint to it. We'll just have to make some friends with some beauticians then, won't we? Yeah, we will. Bit funky. Thanks to Ryan, Paul saved himself £60. There you go, mate. You can leave your tip on the side. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get Yeah. <laughs> ah. It's Monday night. Normally, he'd be out socialising and networking. Instead, he's got a night in with the television listings. Tonight, I'm going to spend the night in. Difference from normal, usually I'd be out having a laugh, socialising, having a good time, rewarding myself after a hard day at work. But tonight, I'm going to spend the night in with EastEnders and then hopefully the bill afterwards. For the first time in months, Paul swaps the social world for his sofa saving him £150 for the night. Paul's rising to the challenge of cold turkey with style, but if he's to make it part of his everyday life, he'll need to identify the reasons behind his need to spend. Hi, Paul Skates, see Benjamin, please. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry calls him for a meeting to identify the root causes of his compulsion. Let's think then about reasons why your relationship with money has always been out of balance from the very beginning. I think I've been spoiled in a way. I think my parents have... They did what they thought was right, and whenever I used to get into debt, if you get to a stage where, say, you're going to get taken to court, mm -hmm. somebody's going to step in and pay it. And I suppose that's probably part of the reason why I've never really... I've just looked at it as a number. I never look at it as cash as such. And that's why I always, burying my head in the sand, I just go to a cash point. I never... I just punch in and never look at the screen because I want to see. And if it doesn't give me any money, then I'll go to the next card. What does it feel like to have your parents come to the rescue? It's, it's embarrassing, especially at my age now. It's one of those kind of... Paul's parents have paid off £20,000 of his debt and Benjamin wants to discover why. Well, let's think then about, not about money, and not even about numbers, but let's think about the family dynamic in a sense. With my mum, I'm probably overly protective of her because she has an illness, and we're very close. Has this illness been going on for a long yeah, time? Yes, it's, she's had it since she was in her 20s, and um, still it affects her greatly now. As the years have gone on, it's progressed further, the illness, because it's one of those kind of debilitating illnesses. So I've seen it more, and obviously as you're growing... I don't think I notice it as much as a child, but as an adult now, I'm more aware, and I can see physically it's in, you know... Is it effect. OK for you to tell me what the illness is? Yes, yeah, she's got renal failure. Right. So I suppose that's why I'm always overprotective. What you're talking about, in a small way, is a reversal of the parent-child yeah. dynamic. Now, clearly, that wasn't the only part of your relationship with your mother, but it's a part of it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we can think about is, did it make you under-responsible? Mm -hmm. Are these both reactions to encountering responsibility earlier than other children might do? Mm. As a child, Paul felt overly responsible towards his ill mother, and Benjamin suspects this lies behind his spending. What happens if you stop watching over her? What's your worst fear? That anything could happen to her, which anything. would, and you know, she would devastate does. you. Yeah, it would devastate me. So therefore, there's that fear, isn't there? You know, being the support of someone who's ill is difficult, and inside that difficulty are many, many complex and upsetting thoughts and feelings that rarely see the light of day. Mm -hmm. One may be, I've done this to you, I've got to heal it. Another may be, I'm really pissed off with you for being ill. It would have been so much nicer for me if you'd been well. I would never, ever resent my mother, and especially not for an illness, cos it's not... Because she always wants me to be off doing my own, you know, not worrying about her, but I can't help that. You say categorically you would not feel like that. But you've behaved like that. Yeah. We've got, um, Paul's finding it hard to accept, but Benjamin's keen to see if there are any other clues. Is there anything you can't bear or you've got phobias about or you're very afraid of? Or... Heights. Yeah? I have the biggest fear when it comes to heights. I just don't like heights at all. How do you feel when you're in a high place like... Like I'm going to fall off. Yeah. But it's just a fear. But it's a, it's a vertiginous sense of being higher up than you should be. And it, you know, to me, it reminds me of a sense of exaggerated responsibility for a child. Biggest part of today with Benjamin that I found tough was actually 
not him grilling at me about me as a person, about him questioning my parents and stuff. Because it's not, it's not nice for anybody to hear somebody maybe inferring something which you know isn't true. Um, and again, like with me, he was saying about me punishing, I'd never want to punish my parents. So that angle was really difficult. By day six of cold turkey, Benjamin's session is weighing heavy on his mind. He's only spent 20 pounds, but he's had enough of doing it the hard way. Paul decides to kickstart the weekend and heads home to his parents in Bournemouth. So it's gonna be a catch up night out and just have a laugh, relax after a very hectic, stressful week and just, just give me a chance to breathe if you like and just have a good night out. Having spent the last five evenings at home, Paul's desperate for a night on the tiles and heads for drag queen bingo. But with a cold turkey budget to stick to, he's invited along the bank of mum and dad. For once, Paul isn't first to the bar with his hand in his wallet. Here's Lux in with the scratch cards too. He knows just what to do with the winnings. Yeah, can I get a pint of Tony Bay with lime, a fossils and a vodka lime lemonade, please? I'm having a great day. I'm not having to pay for lunch, I'm not having to pay for drinks, and that ten pounds I've just won, again, it's not my money, so real quids in and happy. Five pints later, Paul's only touched half his cold turkey budget. Not everyone's fooled. Lifestyle, because that's who he is. And while he's living this lifestyle, he needs money. <laughs> so it's a good job he's got friends around to sub him. <laughs> when you tell me that you love me. And with the last day of cold turkey at Mum and Dad's, he, unsurprisingly, comes in with £20 intact. Back in the real world, Paul's parents are pulling the plug on his debts. Thankfully, Jay is on hand. She's been through his figures and rebudgeted them back into the black. So, Paul, I've got your new budget here, but right. before we go through this, I just wanted to ask you how you got on with Cold Turkey Week. Well, actually, you've been pleased to know it's very successful. I come up with ingenious ways to still go out and have just as good a time, but without actually burning my own financial budget. But yeah, and I won a tenner. It's only a tenner, but I won a tenner on the bingo on, when we oh. went on Sunday. So there was like that added bonus, if you like. But if you'd have won that tenner on a normal week, yeah. it wouldn't have been a big deal. But when you're no. down to yeah. not much, the it's like winning the lottery. Yeah, I mean, normally I would have just gone, well, what's the point in playing the game for a tenner? Mm. But it was a tenner that bought a couple more rounds. How much did your friends have to pay? for in that week? Uh, pretty much everything. Right, OK. <laughs> I think you did a lot of blagging then during the week. I'm not yeah. sure how much you actually learnt, okay. but this is the new budget right. that we've done. Now, what we've done is we've been through your current expenditure. Right. So when we run down all of that, what we see is that there is an overspend every month of 1,265. Right. So we can see where the debt is coming from. Right. Now, what we've done is we've gone through and we've recommended some cuts and rearrangements of money. You could be in a much worse position, but you have got this great job now and things are moving forward. Mm -hmm. So it is quite positive looking forward if we can stick to this new budget. Now, your champagne lifestyle... Which is essential. All you're going out, alcohol, meals yeah. out. At the moment, that's costing you £850 a month, and we've cut that right back. Okay. to 250 so that is going to mean <clears throat> not that you can't go out mm -hmm. but you're going to again just have to make a few choices about when you go out when you stay in yeah. and also not be the first one there going okay drinks are on me yeah okay. so that's going to stop that so when we look at your pampering yeah. or your hairdressing tanning waxing everything there at the moment it comes in at 736 and we have cut that to 50 pounds a month whilst you get these debts yeah, sorted. Yeah, I'm just going home. Paul's situation is bad, but it could have been a lot worse. Now Jay wants him to redress the balance. And the other thing at the moment is your parents, to yeah. whom you owe how much? God knows. 
a huge amount. Yeah. We reckon nearly £20,000. Right. And at the moment, you're not paying them anything. <clears throat> no. And we have put that in at £250 right. a month. Now, Perhaps your budget is really not half as bad as some people have no. to live on every month. Uh -huh. So at the end of the day, it is down to you to take responsibility and to really put the effort in to make this work. Sure. I didn't <laughs> think it was going to be anywhere near as good as that, actually. So I'm quite surprised and feeling really good about it. I never really know with Paul how much of it sinks in. What I am worried about is his parents. If it wasn't for them, he'd be in a much worse position than he is now. And he really, really needs to understand that they are top of the list for getting paid back. Having given him the tools to healthy finances, Jay now wants to give him the tools to a healthy body instead of spending hundreds of pounds on pampering. Five pound lunchtime exercise classes with a very exotic twist. Today we're going to go in here and I've enrolled you in a capoeira class. Right, okay. okay. Which is a sort of Brazilian dance class, but it's designed for mind and body. Okay, what on. What the earth uh, have you brought me to? First up, some light stretching exercises. Feel the burn, Paul. I don't know about um, changing this from pampering to this. It's bloody tough. For a man involved in events management, Paul's choreography skills need polishing. I can do the massage, facial, wax, the whole bloody works. Jesus. Yeah. I'm feeling quite done in, but feeling good. Quite damp. Damn. I've just been sweating profusely, yeah. What we're trying to do is get you to get a bit of a high out of this so that you're missing the treatment less. Sure. And for five pounds a class, it's going to keep you on budget. Yeah. And, and keep you happy. fit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I think if I'm honest, capoeira, it's all, I enjoyed the experience and it's a very um, artistic uh, martial art, but however, I think I'm going to stick with my normal pampering routine. Paul's giving Jay's lunchtime classes a wide berth. A free lunch on his parents is an altogether different matter, but this one might leave a nasty taste in his mouth. Despite his best efforts to hide the true extent of his debt from them, his latest loan statement's been posted to their house, and they're not too happy. Where's your student loan arrived? Oh. The £6,000 student loan that I currently have has now become £16,887.82. Mm. Which is a bit different to what you said. Yeah. Because you are son, we're going to find out. We're going to wonder, you know, I'd be saying to you now, if I, if, if I had no idea that you'd have much debt you were in, now you've got a full-time job, when, when are you going to start getting the mortgage like your brother? When are you going to get your first for your own pay? When you'd have to be making more life. No, no. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which is not... No, it's not fair and it's not right. It's the only it's, thing that I have lied about is the money. This is your debt, yeah. not our debt. No, but so that's why... We're not, yeah, that's we're not ever going to be as a that we'd like to because you're a grown man and you are the one that's going to suffer because you've got to pay this. And you get near to it, the Paul's running out of excuses and it isn't just his parents who are at a loss. I, I just don't understand how you've got yourself into so much debt because I... I never did it, and yeah, but you I even lived at home. You have a different lifestyle to me. You're happy to just, you're happy to go to more run-of-the-mill places, and be, and that's fine. Whereas I go for a more, I prefer the whole quality of stuff. You can't go to McDonald's and get the quality of service that you'd get here. Yeah. And also, the people I mix with uh, have got money. So then you're in that circle, and and they're going to those places. So you're going there. It's not a case of keeping up with the Joneses, but you're in that circle, and it's then, well, you kind of can't afford it, you can't go, and then you're missing out on that interaction, that part that I enjoy. Yeah, but I used to go out all the yeah. time. But I think also there's a difference, like, you'd go out and drink, I don't know, a pint of lager, and I'd, if, um, normally, if I had the money, I'd be drinking bottles of Cristal and stuff like that. So it's having that 
enrichment and taste for more expensive things. Not that you wouldn't enjoy it. You're just burying your head in the sand. I had no idea it was as bad as it was. No. And maybe if, I, if we had it done, if you'd have told us, we could have stopped it getting as bad as it is. Yeah, but then I suppose... Not, and I don't mean clearing it, because no, we don't no, no, know no, no, that, no. because we're not in a position to do that, but just to stop you getting any more. I think um, the whole revealing, if you like, of the letters that came to us, because I'd always protected the fact by getting it sent to another address, I would have thought they'd be more ballistic, but I suppose, like my mum was saying, now I'm a grey man, they're not angry in that respect, they're just upset, because obviously they've supported me throughout the whole of uni, yet I've still managed to accrue 20 plus thousand pounds worth of debt when I wasn't actually paying any rent or anything. With family relations at an all-time low, Benjamin intervenes and calls them for a meeting. He suspects that Paul's spending is subconsciously linked to the responsibility he felt towards his mum when growing up. Here's the situation. Paul is spending your money and has been doing so for 11 years, I think we calculated. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. We're here to, to think about the why, I guess. You know, why is he making you pay? What are you really paying for? You know, you're paying financially, but what's he making you pay for maybe emotionally? Because it is a... When you look through it, it's almost like he's punishing you. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. No, a good way to punish someone, to find them, it is a punishment. Yeah. Mm. Because I said to Benjamin, it's like I've been, I've never looked at it that logically. I've been in my little bubble and haven't really thought about what I'm spending and kind of the situations I'm creating actually impacting upon, I haven't looked at it, oh, actually, my parents having to pay. Um, so I think subconsciously there may be that element, but in my conscious mind it's never been, right, they're paying, that's fine. We've probably compounded to the issue by always getting them out rather than letting try and sort the problem out. But at the back of his mind, and probably at the back of ours, we know that if this situation arises again, we're probably going to feel, well, yeah, he's got into this boat again, we've got to try and help him out. It won't shock us. We'll and as Benjamin digs deeper, he discovers his suspicions about the family dynamic are only the tip of the iceberg. If he's coming to you, asking you to bail him out, and you're doing so, kind of knowing that it might happen again, we could ask, what do you feel guilty about? There is something that needs to be let go of. Mm -hmm. And I think it's between the two of you. What do you think it is? I don't know, really, because I wouldn't want it any other way. Unfortunately, um, we had a child that died. Right. And I think, in fairness, and you'll agree, you kept Paul a, a more of a baby for a long time, not allowing him to become, grow up and become more independent, so that he was totally reliant on you being close. Is that something you're comfortable talking about here with the cameras? Uh, I obviously found it very difficult. Um, as a family, I have a, a fear of losing all of my family, because having mm -hmm. lost a son, it becomes... Uh, this was a son after Paul? Mm -hmm. Soon after? So Paul, Paul was, was a young... 18 months old. Right. when Adam died. So, yeah, it was easy for me to just give my, my affection, my extra love for that child to Paul. The baby. Mm, because, and he needed me, and I, at that stage, needed to be needed. Having lost her third son in childbirth, Paul's mum became overly protective of him, and Benjamin can still see echoes of that in their current relationship. You know, with you struggling with such a loss, and with him helping, in such a considerable way to fill that loss. That's a very special early dynamic to set up, one which I think has not been corrected. And I think that there's, you know, there's all sorts of consequences to that, the most recent one of which is the two of you down the bank, you saying this will be the last time, and Paul saying this will be the last time, and both of you knowing it won't be the last time, because you're still playing the game that was set up all those years ago. Yeah. Today's been really tiring. It's been um, a bit of an emotional roller coaster, and obviously being with Benjamin and my parents and different topics were brought up that are quite sensitive to us as a family, um, it's quite challenging. I was ama I'm amazed at how tired I feel, actually, because I haven't actually done a lot physically, but mentally it's been quite a drain.
The days brought a lot of difficult issues to the surface. Paul heads to London and finds a way to push them back under. Thank you very much. The season's going to be extremely exciting. Just had my hair done, fresh on the sun, and now I'm off out after a stressful week of not being able to go out and uh, bring on the good times. With the West End at his feet, he heads for a swanky bar. Party Paul's back in town, and all the drinks are on him. Do you need Long Island Yeah, I'll have one of those. The night's indulgences cost him more than £100. He's just blown half his month's allowance in five hours. Jay decides to tackle him head on. If Paul's serious about starting his own events management company, he's going the wrong way about it. She arranges a meeting with party organiser Hugh Fillimore. Oh, here we are. Hi, oh. Hugh. This is Paul. Hi, how are you doing? Good to meet you. Have a seat. Whose clients include Rod Stewart, the Royals, Elton John and Kylie. You're choosing to want to go into what is a very time. risky mm. sort of job market, which makes it even more imperative that when you start, you're going to have to have your finances sorted. Yeah. You can't go into a high-risk business with a debt. No. I mean, these days, you know, banks will not lend you anything unless it's secured. Mm -hmm. When you go on your own, you have got to have those backers in place. You're going to have to put some of your own money in because you don't want a situation where the backers control everything, mm -hmm. and the backers will also want to know that you have the balls to put whatever money it is that on the line. Maybe the money you're spending on champagne you could start saving as you mm -hmm. buy cheaper things in order to have some kind of fund where you can go, it's all I've got but I've saved for five years and here's five grand. It, it, it is a hugely risky business. It's a very sexy business but the, the events and live world is full of casualties. Having given him the financial insight, Hugh's keen to tackle Paul's professional image. When you're out in the evening, mm -hmm. you're networking in London or Wales yeah. or Bournemouth or wherever it happens to be, what are you trying to do? Are you the guy who's buying all the rounds? Are you the guy who's trying to be the flash one? Are you trying to kind of tell everybody that you're the main guy on the block? How, how are you um, approaching that? I'm always, I'm always the first one to the bar, always, because I feel if I'm taking up somebody's time, then I can't then say, oh, can you go to the bar and get us a drink, please? Because that's kind of disrespectful in my eyes. What you've got to be careful of users. Is, is one of users, but also how you're perceived. If I'd gone around flashing my money everywhere, I would have got nowhere. The key thing is to be sensible and just make sure that you're not perceived as the flash bloke all the time, because that reputation can, can stay with you for years and years and years. I mean, if I was in a situation with you and you bought drinks all night, I'd wander out, hopefully quite pissed, going, <laughs> nice guy. Talked a lot, didn't listen, bought the drinks. Muppet. Now, we hope you've been listening up, because what I'd like you to do as your challenge is to set up a little soiree for some potential backers. Now, okay. the money for that is going to come out of your budget, right. and you're going to be putting your money where your mouth is, so you're going to be using your money that you'd normally be spending on champagne and your razzle and dazzling. That's going to set up your soiree. Yep. Okay, yeah, no, that sounds, that sounds good. Be really creative, keep on budget, and be totally original, yeah? I think the, the keeping on the budget is going to be the <laughs> troubling thing Funny for me, that. but the creative side of everything is fine. I just think the budget is where I'm going to get frustrated, but, again, it's just giving me the learning curve of actually starting off small, building bigger once you've got the, the sort of credentials, if you like, to be able to make it bigger. Paul has one week to mastermind his first event, but Jay's not so sure. She calls Benjamin for a meeting. I think the, the message I'm giving him goes in one ear and then two minutes later it's out the other. So what I'm not sure is when I then go home is how much of it is retained in his brain and he's actually thinking about. I think, in a way, it's like, yeah, she's gone, great, that was quite fun, but now I'm down the pub with my mates, how many bottles of champagne are we going to have tonight? Yeah. That's interesting, because I, I, I feel like there's a lot of denial there, actually. There is something with Paul and his mum that I need to dig deeper into. It's almost a very claustrophobic relationship, I feel, and she's been very ill all his life, and 
I think as a consequence, any negativity that he might feel or any, any dark thoughts he might have had may have become converted into the spending, which I actually see as a punishment towards his mother and his father. I think the thing is that I've got to almost enter his world with him in order to engage him and get him to listen. So I'm going to really have to think about what I'm going to do with him because unless it's something that's really relevant within his sphere of thinking, I don't think he's going to engage with me. To prove her point, Jay arranges for Paul to attend a wine tasting. Like most spenderholics, she suspects he's drawn in by the label, not what's inside. Hello. This is Ollie. How are you? Okay. Nice to see you. This is Paul. Hi, hey, Dave. Hello, Paul. Great to see you. How's so you might recognize With the help of wine expert Ollie Smith, she's chosen six different fizzes for him to taste. But only one is champagne. So what we're going to do is do a taste test okay. to see how much image affects you or whether we can go by taste and this should really really see whether you know your carvers from your crystal yeah. well let's rock on with sample number okay. one now usually with fizz uh, yeah. you want to look for really tiny bubbles which will indicate a high quality tiny bubbles going up in a uniform strand you don't want to think of like soda water where they're massive and they're all going crazy okay. paul says he prefers champagne for its taste not its price. It's nice, but it kind of reminds me of a fizzy wine. So with five of the wines not being champagne, how difficult can it be? It's nice, actually. It's yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. We've come to the end of our tasting. Uh, pick out for me the one that you enjoyed the most. I think I'm going to go with number three, closely followed by number one. I agree with you, it's the best one there, and I'm really pleased to reveal it's English. Great. <laughs> Night Timber, sparkling oh. wine. The trick is, Champagne have got the brand, yeah. but we've got the same soil in this country, and this wine you've chosen has won countless awards. Really? Absolutely, hands down, it's also inexpensive. For really? a vintage fizz, it'll cost you around 23 quid, as God. opposed to... 600 yeah. odds, or yeah. however much you're spending <laughs> on your Cristal. And also, we invented the stuff. Great. Don Perignon <laughs> is told, we're told that the French invented it, but actually a bloke called Christopher Merritt, six years old before Don Perignon even had his, uh, had his champagne going, recorded with the Royal Society that fizz was being made and enjoyed in London. So, Ollie, which one of these was the vintage verve? It was number two. Ah, oh, the one you didn't like. Well, I didn't like... It's not that I didn't like it, it just oh, wasn't as see. nice as number three. Well, there we go. But what I love about this is it gives you the chance, when you do your events, you've got a great story. Oh, yeah. And rather than just the label and the bling factor and the badge, you can then say to them, I've got something that's going to knock your socks off in flavour, but also there's a brilliant story behind it behind because it. it's surprising it's English. it's English. And it makes you look like a connoisseur and it makes you look like you know what you're talking oh, we're about. Liking, we're liking, liking it a lot, yeah. And yeah. it's something that you're happy with. Yeah. No, I don't feel like I'm compromising a great deal in taste. It's nice. Because it's yeah. not like we're suggesting, oh, there's this cheap old nonsense and that's what you've got to yeah. serve because that's what your budget is. It's about finding something that you like, you feel yeah. happy with. As Ollie said, there's got a story to back it up. Mm -hmm. And you've obviously got to be serving that to your clients and, yeah. and feeling confident that that's what you're serving. Mm -hmm. You're getting a, a bespoke suit here, a yeah. tailored suit for the price of a pair of ropey old pants. <laughs> that's going to make him happy. Yeah. <laughs> His time with Jay might be over, but her challenge still stands. In just two days, he'll be staging his first event. Now Benjamin wants Paul to face up to his relationship with his mother. He believes that Paul's fear of heights is linked to the heightened sense of responsibility he felt for her as a child, and that this now manifests itself as a fear of high places. You all right on these stairs? Yeah, the stairs are all right, actually. Yeah. Benjamin's brought him to Crystal Palace, where the facilities include a five meter, a seven and a half meter, and a 10 meter high diving board. How are you feeling up here? As soon as I got into the last step, it was like, oof, the rushing and the anxiety and lightheadedness kicked it's in. It's a bit more serious up here, isn't it? Yeah. What I'm particularly worried about is that this sense of vertigo relates to a highly exaggerated sense of responsibility for your mother. What I'm thinking is that this is your mum. OK. And you 
are holding your mother, you're taking responsibility for your mother. Mm -hmm. So you're going to the edge of the diving board with an extra burden. And I want, I want you to think about that as we go to the front of this quite high diving board <laughs> together. Right, OK. OK? You up for that? Yeah. OK, just come, take it easy, one step at a time. Gently does it. The first board is five metres high, but for Paul, it's almost too much. Now Benjamin wants to address the apprehension he felt as a child. Vertigo is an expression right. of your anxiety. Can you hold on to it? It's funny, it's funny how, like, I've, if, <clears throat> when we explore it further, maybe that I've taken on the responsibility without actually being, without them saying, right, it's your responsibility to look after you. It's weird how you take it on yourself. That's one of the weirdest things about young children. It's absolutely universal that they all take it on themselves because they don't understand there's a world without them. Right. They just see the world from birth as being because of them and about them. So if anything happens, even an earthquake, they'll think they did it. With Paul responding to his line of inquiry, Benjamin decides to take things further by another five metres. You, uh, you fancy it then? Um, well, let's give it a go and see how we get on. Do you feel any more confident now um, than you did at the bottom? I think so, yeah, because it's kind of like testing the water, isn't it? Now you know what to expect. But it isn't long before the heightened sense of responsibility takes hold. Right. Um, just bring yourself gently towards the front, if you can. Right, here is where yeah. it all kicks in. OK, it's so all kicking in. <laughs> like this line. OK, so let's go to this line. Now, it's kicking in the sense of... Yeah. Ooh, Awareness of the high height, up, yeah. High up. And your reaction to that, again, is that feeling of wanting to just fall in, get it over and done with? Um, or just walk back down the stairs. Well, that's a reasonable yeah. option. Yeah. Paul's progressing well. There's just one final step to take. Yeah. I'm wondering how you feel at giving me the ball, giving me your mum to look after. Just for a minute. Yeah, I can do that. So you have no responsibility. Right. You're no longer responsible for her. Someone else will take care of her for mm -hmm. you. And then I want to see if that changes your relationship with, with how you height. feel being up here. OK. Yeah, sure? Yeah, no. Sure, I'll look after it. Promise. OK. Take it seriously. It's not too bad, but it's still, like, rather not be stood here for too long. OK, but the moment you gave me the ball, you walked to the front of the platform. Yeah. No hesitation, not a word. Yeah, that's interesting, actually. <laughs> at last, Paul is beginning to understand how his relationship with his mother is at the core of his relationship with money. I think that the reason you punish your parents over money is because you're actually angry and upset that you've been hanging on to this. My compulsion and impulsive nature to spend, mm -hmm. it's like it's, I'm trying to reward myself because of my mum's illness and stuff, so why shouldn't I? Sod it. Let's yeah. go and just have what I want because everything else, you know what I mean? You've... And why shouldn't they pay for it because she's the one that's ill? Feeling elated, Paul's fear momentarily slips and he decides to take a leap into the unknown. So, hold on, you're the guy with vertigo and you spontaneously want to jump off Just to 10 see metre what it's like, you know? Remember, don't let down, don't think about it. I'm going to count down from three. Um, yeah, right. I'll give you the that. countdown. Three, two, one. He's taken the plunge in his relationship with his mother. It's now up to him to do the same with his finances and his future. I think today, like, um, especially with regards to my mother, it's kind of made me realise that I don't need to wrap her up in cotton wool to protect her. Um, she's still just as safe whether I'm there or, I'm, or whether I'm not. But I think I've finally made... I've gone through that journey and I feel quite a lot different, actually, to be honest. Um, and at first, when he first said about jumping, I thought, are you having a laugh? And then would you have a knee bit? There I was, in the water, I jumped from 10 metres high. So, um, it was certainly an experience. 
Four weeks ago, Paul Skates was living the life of a playboy. Addicted to pampering and posh members bars, he was 37 grand in debt and heading for financial meltdown. Since then, Jay has made him realise it's possible to be sophisticated on a budget. For a vintage fizz, it'll cost you around 23 quid. And given him the tools to seek the success he's longed for. You can't go into a high-risk business with a debt. Meanwhile, psychological coach Benjamin Fry has helped him overcome his fears of his mother's illness and finally take control of his finances. You have £250 to spend solely on yourself. Thank you very much, Don. That's wonderful. And the first of May to come. He's now facing up to the future and his responsibilities, not only to himself, but to those closest to him. There's just one hurdle left to overcome. It's Jay's final challenge. She's asked him to host a night for potential investors, using the £400 he would normally have spent on a night out schmoozing. For Paul, it's the ultimate test. Can he use the skills he's been taught to put his partying days behind him and enter a more productive future? Come on, guys, we've got 30 minutes to go. The kitchen looks a bit funny. It's all right, Shane. Paul is extremely nervous about tonight. I think we've gone from doing a drinks party for about 10 people to, um, I think, about 100 we've got coming tonight. So nerves are running wild everywhere, really. With 10 minutes till the first guests arrive, Paul's nerves kick in. Okay, it's half past seven, just gone. Um, so it's a little bit panic stages. Are they all going to turn up? I'm kind of at that stage where I'm getting a bit peeved with people and trying to rush people along to get things moving quicker. In the oven. Can you get it out? An anxious 20 minutes later, there's some good news and familiar faces. Mum and Dad. He's wowing his guests with the English fizz and, following Hugh's advice, is taking time to talk. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming along. I've brought bit local business people together to show you, showcase some of my ideas and concepts. It's time to get the party started. With the fizz flowing and an impressive lineup of entertainment, Paul's night out on a budget is a smash hit. Four weeks ago, Paul would have been propping up the bar in a swanky London club, spending hundreds on champagne. Tonight, he's pulled off an event that should boost his career. Oh, I'm very proud of Paul. He's done really well and worked really hard, and I think to do this in a two, three days, whatever it was, has been amazing. It's just the end of a, of a, a long journey. Well, tonight's been uh, exhausting. Um, it's been exhilarating at times. It's been frustrating. Um, but it's gone well. I think all in all, there's been a lot of promising conversations with potential backers um, who have actually shown interest and that would like to set up meetings so that I can kind of actually have a more intimate one-to-one -one with them and, and kind of go through a bit more of my ideas and where I want to the next steps move forward for myself. It's nearly two months since Paul Skates embarked on his financial makeover. Now Benjamin and Jay are back to see how he's fared. So Paul, how's it been? Um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, really, from start to finish. Hellish at times, <laughs> especially in cold turkey week. Just because it, my brain's quite active, so actually sitting and watching TV more than an hour, I was kind of like, oh, God, itching to do something. And normally I'd go and do something social or... Mm. Something, but it allows me... I just kind of either clean or doing some work and just from that kind of thing. But it was quite a culture shock for me for that week. And how was your champagne soiree? Was that a success? Yeah, no, it went phenomenally well. I had, um, and had uh, potential backers now for future great. stuff, which is great. Uh, the positive feedback I've had has been really good, and hopefully it's potential backers now. It's just really exhilarating, in a way, just to be able to come out and be completely mm -hmm. independent. All that money that was going on the pampering, mm -hmm. how are you coping cutting down on that? Surprisingly well, actually, and I realised that a lot of it was just... 
it wasn't necessity, it was just pure indulgence. It's yeah. been really interesting because you have really changed throughout this and you have obviously really taken it on board and I think you've sort of surprised yourself with that. Because I've said to a couple of my friends, God, I've really changed. And I said, I know it sounds really bizarre in such a short space of time. Not my personality's changed, just the way you look at things. You don't necessarily need to be socialising in these private venues to mock meet the right influential people within your sort of career sector. You can actually do it another way. I just want you to notice that it may seem to you like there's small changes here and there, but you are 100% reversed mm -hmm. in your attitude to talking about difficult things with your parents than you were when I met you. Yeah. And you're also 100% reversed in the way that the, the money is flowing between yeah. you and them. Mm -hmm. And I do think the two are very strongly correlated. It's quite nice to be able to turn it around and not actually have to kind of rely on them providing for me. Actually, I can provide myself and kind of treat them occasionally as they've always done for me. So do you now feel more in control of your money? Definitely more in control because before, as I said, I never really took control of it because it was just too easy to ignore it. Fantastic. You surprised yourself, I Whoa. think. <laughs> I think my parents are pretty... <laughs> feel like going to pass out every time they hear me speak at the moment. You certainly it's... surprised the bank manager. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to be my new best friend soon. <laughs> My financial burden was the last, the last hurdle for me to get over, so I feel like I've, I've now been able to put that to one side and put it on the shelf and get over it. So it now makes me very excited about my future and also my career.